Good evening, brothers and sisters. My sharing today touches on the physicality of our worship and the importance of our acts of piety and devotions. As Catholics, we are very used to gathering together, to pray together, to share, to break bread together, in other words, to participate in the liturgy, or as we define it, the public works of worship. The sacraments that we celebrate are also seen as outward signs of inward grace. This is a very uh, popular uh, phrase that we like to use, an outward sign of an inward grace. And so we perform outward acts of piety to signify the fruit of inward grace that takes place in our hearts. When we come for Mass, we bow, we kneel, we put our hands together, we put our hands up in praise. Our connection with God is always physical as well as spiritual. We use our hands, we use our voices, and we use our whole being to praise God. And so these are all outward signs of an inward grace that takes place within us. And when we gather together, like what we are doing now, we also show a sign of unity, a sign of faith, in one Lord, we remain united in worship to God and in devotion to our Lord, our Lady, and all the saints in heaven. And what happens when we gather together? We pray for each other. The letter of St. James says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So grace and healing come truly when we confess our sins to the wider community. For us, we confess to a priest who is a brother, who acts in the person of Christ. And we also ask our brothers and sisters in the community to pray for us. So one good question then we can ask now is, do we take lightly the role of our brother, of our sister who prays for us? What stops me from asking a brother or a sister to pray for me for an intention that I might have? So St. James reminds us today of something very important about prayer, that we should not forget the power of sharing our intentions with our brothers or sisters. And if you want it more confirmed, the Lord Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Jesus did not say that where a minimum of 150 people gather for daily mass, or where a minimum of 20 gather for no the novena to the Blessed Virgin Mary, only then it will be answered. But he says, no, only when two believers agree and pray for one intention, it will be done. It is a promise. Jesus promises that he, it will be done, it will be answered, and that he will be with us if there are only two of you or more. So in light of this, maybe you would have noticed that ever since the no Novena devotion has resumed, 
whoever leads the novena every Saturday without fail, I think, would have said, we have no petitions today. We have no letters of thanksgiving today. You might correct me, but I think before the pandemic, maybe even in the old church, when the novena was done, there used to be at least two or three petitions or letters of thanksgiving that would have been read. So the purpose of this specific novena, the novena to our mother of perpetual help, is so that, number one, we can give our devotion to Our Lady and our Queen, and also to ask for her intercession for all that we need. And the power of our prayers being answered lies in us agreeing with one another, just as Jesus promised, to pray with and for each other, to lift our brother or our sister up seriously, seriously, before our Lord and our Lady, and to beg our Lord and our Lady to consider answering their prayers. So I would like to close by bringing to mind the importance of this beautiful tradition of writing in letters of petitions and letters of thanksgiving in this novena to our mother of perpetual help. On my left, you can see that's the, the shrine to our mother of perpetual help. It's been, it's been in our parish for quite a long time. When the new church came, it was there. Now it's here on my left, on your right. And if you come close to it, you can see that there's a little slot in which you can drop in your letter of petitions. I know in this time of new technology and all, we could say maybe why, don't this, why doesn't SFA have a WhatsApp number or an email address in which we can send our petitions in. I mean, we could, but it doesn't allow you to be anonymous because sometimes when you put in a petition, you want to be anonymous. So if you write a letter and put it there, you can be anonymous. So I want to encourage each of you and myself Let's start writing our letters to Our Lady of Perpetual Help to ask for her powerful intercession. It is not enough to say, okay, I think about my intention in my mind or I keep it in my heart. But if we don't share it with another person, just two people like Jesus said, it might not be answered. But where two agree on any specific thing, if you ask for it, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven, as Jesus said. So, I'd like to go on and to say that perhaps writing our letters of petitions and intentions and thanksgiving is a powerful sign, an outward sign of an inward grace. After all, who would write letters to Our Lady? if they didn't believe that she could do anything. So it's a beautiful tradition that we have in the church. I would like to see if uh, we or the prayer ministry can do something to, to bring it up again. Otherwise, <laughs> for many, many weeks to come or many months or years to come, we might continue saying, we have no petitions. And Our Lady might be thinking, does nobody want to ask me for anything? Ask for my help. Amen.